Hi everyone, my name is Mark Kwok and we're talking about my favorite things. Today's a little different because we're not just talking about one thing, but instead we're talking about a collection of things that make up one of my favorite things and that is my desk setup. So mind you, this is gonna be a lot of items and it's gonna be what I consider an overkill desk setup because this is significantly more than anyone needs for anything that you do at the office or for gaming or for, it, it tries to cover everything. It's because I do a lot of things on my computer, to be honest. I, I video edit, I photo edit, I play games, I do work, so I'm there between you know eight and five p.m. every day on a weekday. Let's go into all of the different components that are inside this desk setup. So let's start off with the desk. The desk is by a company called Artifox, but they make some really, really cool design desks. It's very simple. It has cable management in the back so that you can be able to wrap all your cables alongside the back here so you don't have to see these cables on the ground constantly. I also used to have a headphone stand for my headphone. I don't need that with this desk because it comes with these little headphone stands on the sides. The size is perfect for this kind of nook that I have this in. I've been relegated to a nook in our small apartment, so highly recommend it as long as you don't need a sitting and standing desk, which is super popular these days. Let's move on to the chair next, because this is a chair that has taken a while for me to get to the right chair. It's the Herman Miller Embody Chair, and this chair is very, very nice for my own needs. It, it works well on the back. It looks cool, I think, from a design perspective. It's super comfortable on the seat pan itself. Highly recommended if you can find this. Again, I bought this used. They have actually a gaming version of this now by Logitech plus Herman Miller, which looks awesome, but it's effectively the same chair. So you know this is good for you know gamers and office people alike, which that's me. So this happened to be a perfect chair for me. The next piece is what I would consider kind of my my overkill beyond overkill for what I do uh, part of the setup. And for those of you who have watched this channel before, you know that I'm super into audio. I am. I love great sound, but I also love great microphones that produce good sound. Now I have another microphone called the Neumann U87. It is considered one of the best microphones out there, period. And it better be, considering the pricing. I'm not gonna tell you the pricing. You can go ahead and look that up online. It is ridiculous, um, but it is truly my favorite microphone. I, I have not been able to hear or test any microphone as nice as this one. For a Zoom call, totally unnecessary, completely overkill, but my hope is that one day maybe I can do some streams or maybe I can do some voiceover work, in which case this microphone would be perfect because it is about the best as the best you can Yet. The microphone is then connected to a boom arm. It's called the OC White Ultima. It's generation two. This one is kind of that upgrade beyond. And since I had such a nice microphone, I couldn't, I, had, I justified having a great thing that it's connected to. Continuing on with audio, we have the Bowers and Wilkins MM1 speakers. Now those speakers are actually discontinued, so you can't get them anymore, but they are the best balanced speakers for a desk, in my opinion. They're not very big, so they don't take up much space on a desk, yet they provide super good clarity, like clarity like you, you've never heard on a pair of computer speakers. Now, the bass is a bit lacking because you don't have a, a subwoofer, but it's, it's also, you know that it's good because it's also made by an actual speaker company that makes, you know, $50,000, $100,000 speakers and they're just pros in the audio space. And last on the sound department is my audio interface. Now that's where the microphone connects into this device, and then that then connects to my computer. It allows me to plug my speakers into it, allows me to plug my microphone into it, and ultimately process the sound in an awesome way. That's the, that's the layman's way of saying that. And it is called the RME Babyface Pro. RME is known for these types of devices and they're some of the best, um, they're probably one of the best brands in the world to do it. It's the perfect thing that all of my sound equipment goes into. So when I'm not listening to speakers, I am listening to headphones. And in fact, with this setup, I generally am on headphones 
80% of the time and speakers 20% of the time. And so the headphone that I landed on as my very favorite headphone is actually the Sennheiser HD800S. The HD800s have been around for a while now, but when I first heard them, probably eight years ago, 10 years ago, something like that, I, it blew my mind. Like I could not believe that headphones could actually emit this sort of sound. They, they sound kind of like speakers, and I would not trade, I, I've tried so many other headphones and that's my very favorite pair. So that is the overkill audio part of my desk setup. Let's go into the rest of the tech. First, quickly, I put my iPhone down here and then needed to charge, so I have a Mophie wireless charger there. Nothing special, but it's nice. Then it's the monitor. Now this is, uh, it's, it, it was a while before I got to this monitor because I tested various types of monitors. I personally love a 4K monitor because it gives me the most clarity. The trouble is it's hard to game on a 4K monitor. And so thus, I thought the next best thing was to have an ultra wide 3440 by 1440 monitor. And it gives me the best of both worlds because I can game on it comfortably, yet also get that productivity and that crispy image. I chose the LG 34 GK 950 FB monitor. That is a 34 inch monitor. There's actually a new version of it now, but it, it still is rocking. It's 34 inches, it's 3440 by 1440, so good resolution. It is G-Sync compatible, so it has free sync, so you can use, I have an NVIDIA graphics card, so that helps me do that. And then it also is 144 hertz, meaning that the refresh rate is so fast that gaming can be really, really smooth. This is the, the Goldilocks for me as far as monitors go. Alongside the monitor is of course the powerhouse that powers this entire setup and that is my Corsair One PC. I talked about a MacBook last time, but I also, most of my work actually happens in a PC and I do it on a desktop. However, I care about aesthetics, I care about design, I care about size. The Corsair One for me was the perfect thing to fit the bill. It's tiny, but they've optimized the placement of all the pieces to be super powerful. Mine is several years old, so it's starting to show its wear, but I can play any games on it today without problem. The i7-7700K CPU by Intel. It's a 1080 Ti GeForce by, by Nvidia, and that's that still rocks today. It's not quite as good as the newest ones. The 30 series has come out recently, but it's good enough for now. It works so great for gaming. It works so great for productivity, video editing, photo editing. I haven't had any issues. It's quiet, but also small, elegant, powerful, Corsair One. Now the peripherals that come with this particular setup, I use Logitech G. So my mouse is the G Pro wireless. It is an awesome mouse. It looks super simple, yet it's so fast, so light, so just nondescript as well. It doesn't look like this like weird gaming mouse. So to me, it's awesome. Alongside that is the G915. This is also wireless and a mechanical keyboard that sounds amazing. It has the tactile switches. I, I, I think it's overpriced, as with the vast majority of things on my desk, yes, but it is a super elegant solution. It lasts super long on a battery charge, which is like, that was a big deal for me. I went with this set with also the mouse pad that's Logitech G as well, I think it's the G440. It provides me an incredible gaming experience, yet I also think it's a great productivity, like, like the ergonomics is good of all of it too. Now, if we're talking about streaming, like on Twitch, or we're talking also even about just being on a business call for Zoom or Microsoft Teams, you need a webcam, right? I might as well utilize my camera as my webcam as opposed to just letting it sit there and then buying a separate webcam. So I decided, to use my Canon EOS R, which is a bit of my daily driver. That is now my webcam. But if I have it, why not use it? I have a zoom lens, 24 to 70, which is kind of, it's always on this camera. It's like basically my only lens for this camera. And then the Canon EOS R, together I can get that amazing 4K or 1080p footage with the shallow depth of field and like just a, a great image quality for my Zoom calls. A test of what it's like to see me on Zoom. <laughs> Overkill, I know. Neumann U87 as my audio source, and then 
the Canon EOS R as my camera on a 2470 lens. So in order to make your camera work as a webcam, you do need to buy more than just the camera. You actually have to buy a capture card, which goes between your computer and the camera. I have the Magewell Generation 2 HDMI uh, capture card. It's a really high quality one. I don't think I quite needed that. The most popular one these days is the Cam Link by Elgato. I heard that's great. And then you also need to have continuous charging because you can't just, it, it really sucks to have to keep recharging batteries and putting back new batteries and keep doing that. And then on top of that, I'm gonna link a video below from DSLR Shooter. Um, they have a way that you can actually connect your um, existing monitor arm to another arm that allows your, your camera to sit right on top very elegantly. I can basically just have it all connected to one arm, which is super, I just think it looks awesome. Cable management works really well there and it just looks good. Speaking of which, uh, I do have a nice monitor arm that's quite cheap actually. It's called the Vivo and it works with 34 inch. So I was surprised to see that that's the case, but it does. And lastly, when it comes to the whole camera thing and making yourself look amazing on Zoom, uh, there is unique lighting. So I have a window on my left. I also have the Elgato key light as well. It is meant for that desk setup and it looks really good. And and it actually does help make sure that I have good lighting, especially if it's like a nighttime zoom or something like that. I, I get that light right on my face. So just the last a couple random doodads that make the experience better of just sitting at the desk. One of them is a footrest I have at the bottom. I did a lot of research actually on footrests. I went with the footrest that Wire Cutter from New York Times. Um, they recommend it. It's the Ergo Foam footrest. It's just on Amazon. It's not that expensive, I think, but it's awesome and I use it every day. Alongside that, you'll notice that I have these acoustic panels in front of me. This little area, man, is an echo chamber. I spent probably three months of my time figuring out how to best get this place to sound more like a studio and less like an echo chamber. All in all, I think that's I think that does cover everything in this desk setup. This is what I've deemed the perfect ultimate desk setup, like my desk setup of choice. Thank you so much for looking at my desk setup. I'm Mark Kwok. I will see you guys on the next one.